Let's... And have you taken a look at the, what we call it, the uh, homework number five yet? Anyone? In the file folder, it is called HW5. Nice and easy. And it's supposed to do this Thursday, I, I think. Uh, where is my Zoom? Okay, here it's going. It's a long adjustment. Anyone? Form number five? Okay, one guy has seen a unicorn. Anybody else in class? Okay, second. All right, I feel that this is no more than unicorn anymore. Anybody else? Form number five? Okay, well, uh, it's a very interesting homework, homework number five. Uh, so you have the T-section. If you remember how to do a T-section, what is the difference between T-section and the regular section? Too early, too soon? Somebody in the back seat, please. That's right. So if A is within the flange, that means compressor zone stay in the flange, what do, what do we do? Rectangular section, right? If A, which is the compressor zone side, exceeds the flange height, what do we do? Divide and conquer, right? Sun Tzu, right? How do we divide? Divide into two parts. Which two parts? The web and the wings, right? So the web is something different, but the wings are relatively simple. Why is that? We assume all the area in the wing take the full compressive strength of the concrete, which is what? Zero point a5 f prime c, all right? Then how about the web? We use the effective compressive zone A. Remember, A, right? What is A? A is beta one, beta one, beta one, what? C, right? What is C? The actual compressive zone. Why do we need C again? We need the C to track down what? The strain in the what? Oh boy, I just went to the cheese shop this weekend. I see a lot of cheese today, all right? Let's turn the wheel up a little bit, right? Think about why do we need to see? We need to find what? The strain, epsilon, right? Epsilon T or epsilon S? Epsilon T, why is that? We need to make sure the steel for what? Yields, right? And we make sure what? The strength reduction factor phi had to be calculated, all right? And then we get a whole moment, right? That's how we do it. All right, second problem. This nice rectangular section opening in the middle. You see this in the second exam, which is coming up pretty soon, a couple of weeks. How do we solve this problem? What do we do first? A little bit different, right? We need to estimate how much tension force I have. How to calculate tension force? Well, I have a steel, right? There are two properties steel have. Right? One property is what? The yield strength. The other property is what? Area. How do I get tension force then? T equal to what? A S F Y. Right? So I find tension force. Then what do I need to do? Two things in the concrete. Tension and what? Tension is what? Okay, let me rephrase. What is concrete good for? Compression. What is steel good for? Tension. So we have the tension. What do we need? Compression, right? Why do we need compression? Because tension got equal to what? Compression. So we got a tension force. We know the concrete strength, which is 0 0.85 F prime C. Then we calculate what? The area of the concrete that will take care of the compression, which is so-called AC, right? What do we do with AC? What do we do with AC? We're trying to find out whether the compressive zone cover the opening or not. If it does, line is here, then we do a big square minus small square be downwards. If it doesn't, which is like halfway, what do we do? Find the centroid of that, is that right? And why do I need to find centroid of that? Is to find the strain distribution in the section to find what? Epsilon T and also A and also C. And how do we go from there? We got A, we got a C, then we got compression force and tension force, we got what? The distance between the center of compression and the center of tension, which is the center of the group of bars. Then we do what? Mn equal to T multiplied JD. Remember? 
Remember the D bar, JD, right here, JD is what? D minus half whatever bar that is, right? The distance between the top fiber to the center of the compressor block. And by the judge of your facial expression, I feel like you need a little bit refreshment, okay? So go back, think about what we did with this, okay? Today is your day that you start this glorious homework because Thursday is a deadline. Start counting, one, two, three. Counting was about three days, right? Three days, right? So finish these two problems, it's not bad. But the real issue comes in here, okay? I got a student asked me over the weekend, which brilliant guy, right? Actually start a home early, right? The way you go, right? And now the problem is that there's something jumped out here. What we call the span length is 36 feet and clear span is 35 feet. What do I mean by that? Where is my span? Did I show up here in the drawing? Is it in the drawing? Probably not, right? So where exactly is the span? So here, let me show you real quick, right? Share this. New shear and good. We talked about this, right? So we say if we have an L-shaped spandrel like that and an end beam like this and T-beam like this, okay? And you go on and might just as well finish it, right? And that's a nice looking section. It just give myself a little bit more space, right? And we said that the effective width right here is dependent on the distance between the inside line of this cut right here, right? And this is something called SW, right? And in case that left and right is different, we call it SW1 or SW left and SW2 or SW right. But the problem is there's also another parameters called LN. Okay, and in this problem that it says about 35 feet, because this is the clear span. Okay, so where is this clear span? So it's actually along this direction. Okay. Now we briefly shown this in the lecture, but probably did not explain in depth. Okay, so the distance is right here. And actually today I'm going to show that in lens in the one-way slab, but this is LA, a clear span. Okay, all right. And I don't blame you, right? There's a lot of confusion going on here because we thought naturally BEFF, the effect of beam width, right? Should be determined by this so-called transverse direction dimensions. So why on earth we drag into the longitudinal direction into the picture. That is because we need a certain stiffness when we bend the beam in the longitudinal direction. Okay? So that is the reason why we need this. Now, I've said it in the email, if I email any of you, that if you don't understand why we need 35, 36, you can go with 20 feet in the email, okay? So if you already done your homework with 20 feet, that's fine with me. But if you haven't done that, like most of you guys, use 35, which is a clear span, okay? Clear span. Are we all right on this? Get it? All right. So if you forgot the equation, how do we determine this effective flange width BEFF, right? Go back to your notes. And there are two sets of equations. One is for a so-called L shape, remember? And the other is called T shape. Questions on this? Anything? Still confused? All right, well, more questions come to me after class, okay? So that's about this problem. All right, now coming back. Let me share it again. Now, this is the T beam now shape, right? So here, what are the effective width, which is here, BFT and BFT? I call it a different name, but same thing, it's just BFF, right? And find out that there's no calculation on the Bending moment on these two sections, so not too bad. Here, okay, and I made a mistake in the previous uploaded, uploaded, uploaded 
notes and I made the correction over the weekend, okay? The mistake I made is that I'm asking you guys to find S max in these drawings and you cannot find S max. Why is that? Because there's no apply loading view here, okay? There's no apply loading, so you cannot get S max. But you look at the section, one detail here, what does it say? Come on, help me read it out. Number four at what? 10 inches. What does it mean? It means that it provides the reinforcement design for shear already, all right? It told you already the design for reinforcement for shear, right? All you have to do is calculate how much shear resistance can be provided by the reinforcement in terms of ES using the stirrups here, okay? How about VC? Two lambda, two lambda square root of prime C, what? BWD, that's it. So, all we are asking is to find out VVN for all these three nice looking sections. Okay, not too bad. All right, so geometries. For rectangular section, what is BW here? What is BW here? Oh boy, 18 inches, right? Come on, we know that, right? For this nice looking T section here, what is BW? 12 inches, great. How about this one here? I got a 24. I get a 12, I get a 12 going second. Do I get a third time 12 again? 12, right? Why is 12? Is this this? Oh, yeah, sure, of course. So smart, right? Is this here 12 inch? Or is this six plus six? That's right, right. Why is that? I cut a line across the opening, right? Uh, that is the minimum width I can have across the section, which is 12 inches, right? There you go, you got it, okay? So last one, repeat problem four, if the three beams are considered with lightweight concrete and F prime C 6,000 and FY 60 KSI, what is going on here? Lightweight? Changes where? Changes what? Lambda, right? Lambda becomes what? 0 0.75, there you go. That's it, right? Lazy Bob here, don't want you to, well, I want you to do a lot of exercise, but I don't want to write a whole lot. So I just swap a number, ask you to repeat the problem again, right? It's not too bad, isn't it? If you know where to change, right? Okay. Shouldn't have any problem with the homework conceptual wise, okay? Tell me if you have any problem, email me. We can go one-on-one -on -one tutor. I love those things, okay? All right, all right, okay, so. I think we're done with this one. All right, deadline again is Thursday and I hope you are fine. Okay, I hope you're fine. Now, coming back to shear design. All right, coming back to shear design. So shear, 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 right? What we have learned so far about shear? What we have learned so far? Phi VN equal to what? Equal to phi bracket inside what? VC plus VS. Right? And if I dare to explore more, what is VC? VC equal to three parts. What are the three parts? VCY, which is a shear resistant in that, remember this tiny thing here? Here's VCY. And what? V what? V aggregates, VA, right? Great, right, VA. And what? V dowel action VD, okay? So you remember this beautiful chart? two points or five points depend on, right? In the second exam, that's it. Okay, all right. So how about VS? What about VS? VS is the stirrups, right? What is VS? VS equal to what? Now, again, use this little chart to help you. I have a one stirrup sticking out, right? One stirrup sticking out. What is the area for that stirrups? A what? A what? V, is that right? Right, AV. For number three, Stirrups, how many legs I have? Two legs, right? Again, for number three, what is the area? Zero point what? One one multiplied by what? Two, so what I get? Zero point what? Two two inch squared. For number four, what I have? Zero point what? Two multiplied by two, what I have? Zero point four inch squared. Number five, you can do yourself, right? Okay, number three and number four. Now, VS, now I know that for one bar, what I get out of it in terms of shear resistance? AV, what? 
Area multiplied by strength. What is strength for steroids? F, Y, T, right? And F, Y, T shall not exceed what? 60 KSI. If I have F, Y, T to 75, what do I do? You cap it at 60 KSI, right? Plain and simple. So that's one steroids. And assuming that the crack have a length of D, which is kind of like a depth of the section here, and this is under assumption that the crack is 45 degree diagonal. Okay, so distance is that in a stirrup spacing, you know, the distance spacing between the stirrups is S. How many stirrups I have in the cut? How many stirrups I have in the cut? Big spacing divided by small spacing. And that's how we count, right? See, Bob knows how to count. Right. On the contrary, my wife says, I know how to count sometimes, okay? So that is how much of shear resistance provided by what? By what? Steel, is that right? Okay, quick recall, right? Yeah, I'll force you to memorize all this stuff, okay? VC, right? How about concrete? What is the equation for that? Two what? Two lambda square root of prime C, BWD, is that right? So we know that, Again, phi Vn is essentially equal to phi equal to what? What is phi for shear? 0 0.75. what? Bracket inside, two lambda square root of prime C, BWD plus A, A, V, F, Y, T, multiply D over S. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all the theory you need to know for the shear design. That's it. Okay, not too complicated. All right, okay, now. This is theory, right? Quick recall. How about spacing S max? Oh, that's a long story, isn't it? That's a long story, right? And so long that we even made a table out of it, right? So long that we made an even table out of it. So what is this table here, folks? Right? Uh, I don't know, Bob, something to do with the concrete. Is that right? Something to do with the concrete. So category one, okay? Category one, right? So if VVC divided by two smaller than VU, actually not smaller, greater than VU, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means that half of the concrete shear resistance, what? Covers the applied shear, right? So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Spacing. Determine the spacing S max has two equations. What are those two equations? AV, FYT, okay, divided by what? 0 0.75 square root of prime C and help you out here. My memory is bad. What do I miss here? Can you take a look at your notes? BW at the bottom here. Top, do I have a D at all? No, I don't, okay? So that is the one term. How about the other term? AV what? FYT divided by what? 50 BW. So which one do I pick? The smaller one or the bigger one? Smaller one, is that right? Smaller one, right? So minimum of both, right? And that's it, category one, done. Category two, VU is, well, let me put VU in the middle. VU is greater than VVC. Okay, but, In here, right? In here, right? So what is S max spacing right now? What is it? So I need to copy them too, right? So copy here, copy here, blah, 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 blah. I need two more. Do I need two more? What are those numbers? 20, what? Four inches. What the other one? D over what? Two, there you go. So among the four, Maximum or minimum? Maximum or minimum? Minimum. You hate it, but I will make sure after this lecture today, you have all this in your brain because when you go to job site, you can do it just like that. All right, so walk with me, okay? Get, get your brain working, okay? Number three, of course, PVC is no longer sufficient. Concrete is no longer enough. We need steel, beloved steel, like a Jedi needed sober, right? And this is VU greater than that, but smaller than that what? 
smaller than something, right? And provided that category is that Vs, Vs is smaller than what? For what? For lambda square root f prime c, what? B, W, B. Sometimes I forgot lambda, but lambda is there as well, okay? Sometimes I forgot lambda because I naturally assume lambda equal to one for normal way concrete, okay? All right? So that is the criteria. So number three, what do I have? Of course, let's copy all the four here, right? 24 inches, D over two, minimum two requirement. When I'm very happy, what do I need here? As what? As required, isn't it? What is as required? A, V, F, Y, T, uh, multiply D, divided by what? What is that required shear force for steel? What is required shear force for steel? VU divided by phi, that is taking care of the factor, right? Minus what? VC. So what is VC, by the way, in this case? Two lambda square root of prime C, VW, V. Right? So category three, done. Okay. Now this is category three, right? I'm not done yet. Category four, what is category four? What is category four? Category four says everything is the same. Phi VC smaller than VU means just concrete, just not enough. But VS exceeds the four lambda square root of prime C BWD criteria. All right. So I need much, much more steel than what I do. I copy the minimum reinforcement requirement, AVFYT divided by 0.75 square root f prime c b w d and divide uh, and another one a v f y t b w uh, 50 b w and as required right copy this down here these three stay the same but the other two become what this is 24 inch mind you right this is divided by two right what happened to that 24 yeah. half the right become what 12 inches. What happened here? D divided by what? Four. So category number four, done, isn't it? Not too bad, right? And march on, right? Marching on, right? I'm not happy. I say I want to see the full spectrum. So what happens when Vs is greater than A times of lambda square f prime C B W? I just want to say my effort, okay? You know what it is, right? What happens? Change what? Section size, right? So increase section size. That's it. That's it. Did I make a boo boo? Yeah. So in uh, category four for the third term, you have zero point seven five. Oh, five. you're right. Sorry about that. Yeah, take the DL. Yeah, bad habit. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, so that's the table. No hard to remember, isn't it? No hard to remember, right? Okay, you don't need to like do this like yourself. I made mistakes myself, right? Put it on a creep sheet. At least you got to be very familiar with this table, okay? Judging by the level of resistance needed, you can go to the specific spot, find that equation for it, okay? Not too hard, isn't it? Not too hard. Okay, so that's what we have learned so far on shear. So what we have learned so far, with this table, what we're able to do, we're able to do only one thing. That is, if I give you, if given a prime C, F Y T, and V U, which is applied shear, you can what? Give me what? We can have what? What, what is this go anyway? What are we doing here? We fix the bar size, number three, number four, number five, whatever you have on the job side, right? Available. And after that, what do we need to do? What are we designing for here? Is what? Superman, right? Superman, right? It is the spacing we need. In shear, that is only parameter you need to determine is how dense you put the stereos up together, okay? Spacing, that's all we're doing. So the entire table, if you forgot, right? Do this. See the symbol before? That's my password actually for past 10 years. Don't try it, don't try it. Okay, all right, so spacing is needed, okay? For the entire table is determining the spacing between stirrups, okay? That's all we're here to do.
All right, so remember this table. Okay, no more slow speed, right? Let's get on the highway, right? Okay, so now we're fully equipped to do problem. We're fully equipped to do problem. So what kind of problem I might have, okay? All right, so let's see what kind of problem I have here. So last time we were given the section and asked you to calculate how much resistance you have on this thing, right? And now today we're going to solve an actual design problem. And now the problem is a little bit sophisticated because we need a very what? Very spacing. So lecture 14, design for shear, okay? And with varying spacing as here, okay? With varying spacing as here. Why is this screen so small? Anyway, let me zoom in here so you can see better at least, okay? So the problem is like this. I have a simply supported beam on top, okay? And I have piers underneath it to support it. So here's my rubber pads here, rubber pads here. And here's my column on the left and column on the left, okay? And I have a distributed load distributed load, I call it omega u, and that is nine kips per linear foot, okay? Nine kips per linear foot. Omega u equal to nine kips per linear foot, all right? And I now already know that I'm going to go with a T section. My supervisor told me that, Bob, you gotta go with T, okay? And I understand that T section, I have a depth of predetermined depths. No matter what I do, I have to keep my depths within 24 inches, okay, period. More dimension information, I know that here, the span length between the support, and that is counting from the center of the support, CL here, center of the support, CL here, is 19 feet, okay, 19 feet, okay? And be precise, I know that the pier or the column underneath it has a distance of, or has a dimension of 12 inches plus in half of that is six inches. Okay, half of that is six inches. Okay, so with that, I now know the clear span, clear span between the support is what? 18 feet, all right? That's the dimension I have, okay? So I want us to do what? I want us to design, so this is example number one. Okay, design shear reinforcement spacing. Okay, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is my spacing as here. Okay, first thing first, when you have this, what do we do first? What do we do first? Drawings, right? Drawings, right? The two diagrams, our best friends, what? Moment diagram and what? Shear diagram. What does a shear diagram look like for a simply supported condition beam? Okay, so I have what? A maximum shear at the support and like a triangle, symmetric as well because it's uniformly distributed. So I have here what we call a VU max. Okay, VU max. And what is this VU max value here? Okay, what is this VU max value here? So let me say that design, Okay, design, so A, shear diagram, okay. and find out the VU max. And it's just a uniformly distributed low, so VU max simply half of omega U multiplied L at the support, okay? So that is half of omega U, which is nine kips per linear foot, multiplied 19 foot, feet of a span length, and I have here 85.5 kips. Mind you that this 19 is not the clear span. It is an entire span, right? So that is my maximum shear force. So here I have 85.5 kips. Okay. And after that, this is my VU max. How about VU face? That is, if I trying to find out the shear force right here at the support, a face of the support, I need to find out this value here, VU phase, right? So what is VU phase? VU phase is just a linear equation, right? So now I look at this here, I have a nice triangle. So I just draw half of it. I just draw half of it because I know it's a symmetric. So that is my triangle. Here I have VU max. And I know the distance here is 19 feet divided by two, right? 19 feet divided by two. 
Okay. And somewhere I have this VU max, sorry, VU phase. And I know the distance between the VU max and the VU phase is six inches only. Right. So I start with my similar triangle thing. So I know that VU phase, let me write down here, VU phase divided by this distance right here. Okay. So that is half L, 19 feet divided by two minus a distance of six inches. Right. So six inch is half feet, right? So 0 0.5 foot. And that has to equal to VU max, maximum shear force divided by the side of it, which is 19 feet divided by two. So after this quick calculation, I got my VU face is 81 kips. Okay, so pretty boring. I have VU face here is 81 kips. Okay, why am I doing all this? I don't know, Bob. You are a professor, you like concrete. That's why you're doing this. Well, I know that. Why? But why specifically I'm finding the shear force at the face? Why is that? Why is that? Because in last lecture, I made a lot of drawings, right? And what I call it, what? The critical sections, right? For a simply supported beam, there are what? Two critical sections. What are the two critical sections? One is at the what? Face of the support. Remember CS1, not counter strike, right? But the critical surface, okay? How about the second? Where's that, the second? Where is the second? The crack starts from here. And so it extends a 45 degree angle here. And then the second is right here. So this distance D away from face of support. And that is my second critical section, right? Second critical section. So all we're doing is to find the shear force at first critical section, which I call VU phase, okay? So that is 81 kips, okay? Now, this is B, by the way. Okay, and now C, which is V at critical section here, okay? And I just call it critical to differentiate. Now here, I have the same triangle and maximum shear force is 85 VU, 85, 85.5 kips. And here I have VU phase equal to 81 kips and distance, distance, D away from it is my critical shear, right? And what is this value here? So I do the same thing, right? So VU and U, forgot U. VU critical, use that similar triangle thing, divided by the distance. And this distance here is what? Half of L or half of 19. Minus what? Minus this fellow here, which is six inch, and minus here, a D. What is my depth? My boss told me that I got to use 24 inches, right? So that is 0 0.5 foot of this here, uh, minus a two feet of this fellow here. So VU critical divided by 19 feet divided by two minus 0 0.5 minus two. And that has to equal to VU max divided by 19 feet divided by two. So I have now VU critical equal to what? VU critical equal to what? Come on, help me out here. Calculators, pull them out please. Well, yeah. Anybody else? Come on, let's punch some numbers, okay? I have on the notes, but let's punch on some numbers. So I know you're thinking with me, okay? What I got for this one, VU critical, let's do some calculations. So, to help me out, right? So think about it, right? I'm just thinking in my head, and this is digress. I have VU critical, half of 19, that is what? 9.5, 9.5 minus 0.5, 9, 9.9 minus 2, 7. I have here VU max 85 divided by 8 point, sorry, 9.5, right? So get this one out and put it here, 85. Multiply by seven, zero, nine, five. So this is five, so one, two. This is five, one, nine. What I get? 85 multiplied by 12 divided by 19. 63 clips. Okay, so digress over. So that is how much I get, 63 clips. So this fellow here is 63 clips. So now I have all the shear forces, critical sections at the face support and at the 
critical section two, right? Distance D away. Now, what do I need? What do I need? Well, I have the shear diagram, right? Nicely laid out. And let me just exaggerate and put it out here. So I have my nice half span. I only do half span because the other half is symmetric, okay? So here's my shear. And I know that at this point, I have a VU max equal to 85 kips. I have my VU phase equal to 81 kips. And I have VU critical equal to a 63 kips, okay? So to help myself, I say, look, it's gonna be a linear line, know that from the beginning, right? And now I start need to do my design. And all I'm trying to do is do my design, stir up spacing, right? To determine how much resistance I have, right? So I have several options. Here, I can design with 85 kips, all right? So I got certain spacing. And then I say, maybe I get a region here with a spacing, let's call it as five. And then I can divide by zone again and design for what? For VU phase was 81, right? So this goes here. And then I can have another spacing as four. So, right? I can do that. So now in terms of stirrups, matching patterns, right? In terms of section, this is my section here. And remember, this is the mid span, okay? This is the center mid span. Symmetric on the other end, okay? I just need to care about the left side of it. So here, that means I have stirrups. I don't know what it is, but this is S5. Here, I have stirrups, maybe a little bit less dense than I have a spacing between them as four. Okay. And then I say, look, buddy, all I have left is VU critical. And I'm going to extend like this and all the way through, all the way through and get my design like this, and I just call it S1. And then all my syrups has to be like this. Went crazy, right? And this is S1. Is that okay? Is this okay? We talked about this last year, last lecture. Is this okay? Well, it's probably fine, safe, right, by Bob. But if you go to job site, your boss may not be happy. Why is that? Why is that? Because we over design, over design. Isn't that over design? Too much, too much. So let's knock it out, right? I said, you know what? I don't feel comfortable doing this, okay? Nah, not like this. I don't like this. Too much, too much. I want to refine my design. I want to refine my design. Now these values, VU max, I pick it because that's the maximum shear force ever. Now 81, 63, I pick them because they are the critical sections, right? I need a number to mark the distance, do you see? Right, I need a number to divide it into different lengths of zones, right? So I'm exhausted with all my three magic numbers. What else I'm gonna go for? High reporters, right? Riddles, right? When nobody is, you know whom, then everybody is, you know whom, right? So we'll start looking in our table, right? Who else is available in the table here? Who else is available? I definitely have what? PVC divided by what? Two, isn't it? So that is my criteria, remember? So VVC divided by two might be some nice number I can check into, right? I can look into, right? How about VVC? Because that's second category, right? How about four lambda square root prime CBWD? Is that right? So I can have category three and naturally category four is checked because this number governed two. And also I may check my A lambda square root prime CBW anyway, but this check, does it really care? Does it really govern the spacing between stirrups? Probably not. Why is that? Because if you ever end up checking that, meaning you need to worry about section, right? Then your boss says, no, Bob, your section has to be 24 inch deep, has to be a T section and forget about it. Is that right? So I don't have to care about this, which means I just need to check it to make sure that is fine. 
If not, increase my beam web, right? BW a little bit, then that's it. But I'm not gonna play spacing with that anymore. All right. So all we need are three numbers, right? Out of this, half of phi VC, VC, and what? Four lambda square root prime C, BWB, isn't it? Isn't it? All right. So now I got three additional numbers on top of the numbers I pick here. So I need to find the phi VC divided by two now. So I go from the middle of it. Why? Because there's no shear force in the middle, right? And I start grow, grow, and start climbing up the hill, climb up the hill, and find out a value right here happens to be phi VC divided by two. Okay. Then what I do? Then what I do? I provide the spacing correspondingly here, and let me call this to be S1. Column one, isn't it from table, right? That's the spacing I designated for, right? Two terms, find the minimum, I'm done, right? Then I keep continue, I say, look, Bob, you keep climbing up the hill, keep climbing up the hill. Maybe you exhausted yourself at the point of VVC, isn't it? Right? Remember in our table here, what do we call this? Zone two, S2, right? Zone two, S2. Now you keep climbing up the ladder. You say, why not keep going, keep going, keep going until you see a four lambda square root of prime C, B, W, D, okay? And then you stop there and this is so-called zone four. Okay, zone three, ah, bad, okay? And then in between this number and this number, uh, we'll check this whether it is greater than A lambda or not but usually it's fine. So this zone here left is the S4. And now S4, and this is also S4. So might as well is to make S4 merge here. So with this idea now, with this idea now, I'm gonna use a totally different color. And let me use this if this is clear. So with this, I start dividing my sterile spacing. I say, I will have one zone here, Uh, S1, one zone here, S2, one zone here, S3, and one zone here between this four lambda and this VU face right here, okay? And merge them two, merge them two. And why we can do that, I'll show you, but I merge them two right now, just by my instinct is S4, and then left over is S5. Without doing any actual calculation, I did what? I divide my shear design into five zones, right? Why am I doing that, Bob? Why are you doing this? Why are you dividing into, from one, a simple thing, make it so complicated into five? Why are we doing that? Because if I do that, right, I might as well clean up all my horrible drawings here and use my red color to develop so-called resistant, shear resistant envelope. Okay, shear, and this is a new term for your resistance envelope. And I need to know, I need to ensure that my shear resistance envelope has to cover my blue line, which is VU line, right? So by the judge, uh, judging by the zone that I divided, essentially I'm gonna have this all the way here, stop right here, shade it, and this right here, shade it, and those, this right here, shaded, and this right here, shaded. All right, because constant stir ups, right? Within the zone, I have a constant stir up spacing. I have a constant shear resistance, is that right? Within each zone, I have a constant stir up spacing, right? So I have a constant shear resistance. So that's how I'm gonna draw my steps. Do you see it? Okay, any question on this? Very critical concept. Are we okay with this? All right, so we haven't got any numbers yet, but I know intuitively I need to divide my span into different zones. So I have a total of five different stair spaces. I can save my money, save my construction cost, and I'll be the best designer ever, right? Okay, so with that, let's take a look. Okay, so finally, I know where am I going with this, right? I know where I'm gonna go. I am going here. So how do I determine the distance between this right here 
and distance between this right here and the distance between this right here. How do I determine that distance? I'm gonna use my similar triangle story, isn't that? I'm gonna use my similar triangle story. So now with that, right? Let me just take a little bit of time of yours, right? Say D, where is, let's see what I have here. Where is VVC, VVC divided by two and four lambda square root of prime C BWD. Where are those critical sections? Where are those division lines at, right? So what is VC? Let me zoom in so you can see better. VC is what? Two lambda square root of prime C BWD. And let me spit out some concrete, right? I say two multiplied by 1.0 normal way concrete and that prime C, let's just use 4,000 PSI, very curbside concrete. And then BW, 12 inch, assuming a TB, and this is all given afterwards. Sorry about that, but this is what I have right now, 12 inch, and I have a depth of 24. That is given by the design. I can now change that. So 24 inch. Okay. So with this, I got VC equal to A, 36.43 kips. And just save you the time, I'm just gonna march on. And now VVC, which is 0 0.75, multiply 36.43 kips. And I have here a 27.32 kips. Okay, and that is VVC. So naturally VVC divided by two is what? What is VVC divided by two? One, three, six, six kips. Is that right? I just had to calculate that. I don't know. Check me, please. If I made a boo-boo, we're gonna stuck with it for a long time, right? Let's try to correct that. Anybody get the same number? Yes. Come on, same? All right, good. So VVC. What about four lambda square root of prime C, BWD? What about this? What about this? If you haven't noticed, this is basically what? Two times of what? Is that right? Two times if you see, right? I'm cheating, I know that, right? I'm cheating, right? So 36.43 multiplied by two, what I have? Six, eight, two, seven, <laughs> kips. All right? All right? That's okay, right? So immediately, I realized, Houston, we have a problem. What do you mean, Bob? We have a problem. What problem I have? I don't have a problem with VVC, right? 27.32. I don't have a half of it. It's a very low number, right? Why do I have a problem? Because 72.86, right? This number is what? Is what? Is larger than this guy here, isn't it? Is larger than this guy here, isn't it? So we need to move this point somewhere here, isn't it? Because this is critical, right? And 72 has got to be something here. So this is actually for where the four lambda business is at. So this zone has to be modified a little bit, okay? So matter of fact, uh, supposedly I need to have this zone here and then step down and the, this zone here. And that is my theory but this is too complicated, isn't it? I have two triangles, supposed to be like this, right? Tail and heel, right? Toe and heel, right? But now no longer, right? Too complicated. I say, you know what? I really not happy. I'm not really happy about this. I'm just gonna merge. I'm lazy. I'm civil engineer. I want to be safe, right? I don't care about the cost when the safety is my concern, then, yeah, sorry, just prepare this line here. And then I'm gonna do this. Just got all of them together. So I'm going to merge my three, four together. No more division. And I am going to use my S4 instead in this whole zone here. Okay. So not everything will go according to the plan. You have a perfect plan, but it doesn't work that way. It has to be modified later if it doesn't work. Okay. So now after all this, I finally have my zone divided. I have one, two, three, four, four different zones. All right, four different zones. Okay, now 
one minute, one minute, okay? So let me give you some space and we'll calculate them next lecture, but let me just give you out. After calculation, miraculously, for the first time, Lazy Bob actually got this distance for you. This is 1.5 feet away from the center and this is three feet. And here is, uh, this is not three feet, okay? Three feet right here. And this is seven feet right here, okay? Actually seven feet right here, okay? And I got a distance, okay? Assuming I done the calculation, I got this distance. So what I'm looking at is a span. What I'm looking at is a span like this, okay? And I can divide my zone as VU max, right here, 85 kips. And then VU face, 85, one, sorry, 81 kips. And critical, VU critical, yeah. Let's just use C, okay? 63, and then VVC, what is VVC? 27.32 and half of VVC, what? 13.66, okay? And the distance is that this is 1.5 feet and this is three foot, okay? And I don't care about this anymore. I just have this to be a six inch plus a D, right? And then all I have is these zones, right? Stirrups here, one zone, a little bit loosened up all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way here, one zone. I'm overlapping my beam joints here, okay? Don't get confused. Then I have another loosen up spacing here. I have another loosen up spacing here. So I have S5, S4, S2, S1. Is that right? I now have four zones, okay? I have four zones. So I now need to design for it. So S5 is determined by this shear force here. S4 is determined by this shear force here. S2 is determined by this shear force here. And S1 is determined by half of PVC here. So now the problem becomes what? The problem becomes design S1, S2, S4, S5 with respect to V, 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 C divided by two A and V, V, C and V, U face and V, U max. And we have done this problem in last lecture, two lectures before. On Wednesday. Is that right? We convert a various spacing section problem to a just increase of shear force, asking for the spacing problem. Okay. All right. We'll continue uh, on Wednesday, but if you have time, please try to design it. Okay. Try it because this is a quiz. Okay. This is going to be a quiz. And we'll probably have this as an in class quiz on Wednesday. Okay. So take a look at this. All right. Good deal. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Okay. Thank you.